So in our last video demonstration, we derived the formula to predict, I mean, to get the parameters that give you minimum variance between a model and the data that you're trying to predict, to predict with that model. So we went all the way through that derivation. So if you're wondering where any of these equations come from, go back to that, um, to the previous video and go through the demonstration there. So in this demo, we're going to come up with a, a model where we're predicting an output y and it's going to be equal to beta 0 which is just going to be a constant value plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 so I've got this data that I've saved as a matrix um, as a mat file so we have 100 data points for our output y for our inputs x1 and x2 and I've just loaded those so the first step is to uh, build, I've actually got this code already, and I'll just walk you through the code so you can see how to implement least squares data regression. So first we load our data. We then concatenate all of our inputs into a single matrix. So x1 looks like this, it's a 100 by 1 vector. x2 looks like this, it's a 100 by 1 vector and we're just going to stitch them all together into a larger matrix and you'll notice we want the first column of our matrix to be just a column of ones that's the same size as uh, vector x1 so once we define x we get x is now just looks like a spreadsheet so we have this uh, column of ones and then we have a column containing all of our x1 data and a column containing all of our x2 data Let's take a look at our y data. So it's the same as x1 and x2. It's a 100 by 1 vector containing all the recorded data for y. And our objective here is to come up with a model. Let's say we're running a plant and we want to have a way to predict some output and we only know the inputs. Well, we can use our past data, knowing what x1 and x2 is in the past, and also knowing what y was in the past to develop a correlation then we can um, use that correlation to predict future values of y. So here I'm solving for beta using the formula that we derived in the previous video. video. So beta is equal to the inverse of the product x transpose times x and then that product is multiplied by x transpose times y. So when we step through that this beta is, these are our coefficients for this correlation that we are developing. So our correlation specifically is y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2. And that's what these betas mean. So our sum squared error is uh, defined as we derived in the previous video. It's uh, our measured y minus our modeled y, so our modeled y is x times beta, the transpose of that times y minus x times beta. So that product give us our sum, gives us our sum squared error. And then again, you can see that's a scalar, and that value is around 1,100. Excuse me, around 11,000. So then we want to get the total variance in our system, as we defined in the previous video. So the total uh, error is about 300,000. I mean, the total variance in our system is about 300,000. And then our R squared tells us how, how good this model fits. So even in just these few lines of code, we have already fit this model. It's that simple. And we have an R squared of 0.965. So that's a pretty good R squared, which means our model is pretty good. So what we want to do is look at what's called a parity plot. So a parity plot, um, is when we plot our measured data versus our the data that our model predicts. So a perfect model would have a, an exact one-to-one -one correlation. So we, our parity plot would show all of our data in a perfectly straight line that has a slope of one and an intercept of zero. So let's see how good this model is for our x's, um, using our x's as inputs, as inputs to predict our y's. So here's how that plot looks. So you can see um, it does a pretty good job. We have a scale of zero to 200, I mean minus 50 to 250 on the x-axis, 
and then minus 250 to 200, so there's not a one-to-one -one correlation exactly. And if I go through this, I'm actually going to plot this line that represents a one-to-one -one correlation in this next line. So you can see that line would represent a perfect model. If all of our points on this parity plot lined exactly on this line, then we'd have a perfect model. But as you can see, our model has some errors, particularly um, up in this range. So what this tells us, you can see the data is really fits quite closely together in kind of this arc shape. So what that tells us is that perhaps our system doesn't behave totally linearly, which means we might want to introduce some nonlinear terms into our model. So the way that this works is we can still keep our model linear in the parameters, but we can make it nonlinear with respect to the variables. So because I've set this code up so concisely in matrix form, to include more model variables and more model parameters is as simple as just entering in a new column vector with the model. So we can um, enter in a new column vector into this matrix of x values. So let's say that I wanted to model x squared in our system. So the resultant model would be y is equal to beta naught, beta zero times, I mean, sorry, plus beta one times x one, plus beta two times x two squared, plus beta three times x two. So we're gonna have one additional parameter because we've introduced this new variable in our system. So let's see how this model fits. And you can see there's really no correlation. This doesn't really do much to improve our model. Let's take a look at our betas. So now we have four parameters instead of three. And our R squared is actually identical. So it found a very small value for, um, there's very little correlation between Y and the square of X2. So now let's look at what if we added X1 squared and you can try various um, manipulations of the data to see which one gives you the best model. So now I'm trying X1 squared to see if that gives us a better model fit. So I run our system and as you can see now this orange data um, is a parity plot for our new model which is includes X1 squared and as you can see it lines up almost perfectly on that line. There's a little bit of random error in there. And here's the plot again with the blue data. So you can see this is a much better model. We have this really nice one-to-one -one correlation. Remember the solid line represents a line basically um, with a slope of one and an intercept of zero. So we want our data to line up perfectly on that line. And let's take a look at our R squared. So now our R squared is actually 99%. So it's a, a really good model fit to this data.